Welcome back to the channel everybody, it's Semi Original Guy aka Mr. Cannon from Advanced Wars by Web, bringing you another live league game of the day. Today, we are on Future Retro. This match was sent in by the map maker actually, so very cool map. I have not seen any matches on this map in particular, but today we are featuring two very promising live league players, so we have the Digest himself. Versus Chloe Box, who is a relatively new player to Advance Force Bioweb, but has shown that they can truly contend with the top level players. So, very cool stuff. They both have chosen Adder today. So, Adder is a day to day, gets nothing, but he does have his co power and his super co power, which will increase his movement by one and two, respectively. Now, this map, it's a very interesting map. So, very strange dynamic to this map because we actually start with a pre-deployed missile which is covering the enemy airport which is also pre-owned so very cool stuff very cool stuff not sure exactly how this match is gonna play out but we are gonna find out soon enough folks so strap in and let's see how this one went down folks alrighty so day one two and three standard infantry builds because you gotta get those infantry on the field folks number one priority in advance for the by web okay carrying on we are on the end of day three here and we have no day three recon from Digest. no day three recon no monkey business today folks no baboonery but what he does have is infantry and they are capping away now the immediate captures on this map is not uh, really anything significant you know we do cap a couple properties but the real profit comes from capping like this section right here plus port and vice versa over here like that's where your bulk of money comes from and that is a contested area you can probably grab the corners fairly easily like I don't really see it being super contested in the corners but this right here and this right here where the comp towers are highly contested so I would be definitely watching out for that folks um, the Degis he's jumping ahead here and he's got an infantry in position to actually start capping that little area here now Chloe box not really too far behind he's got an, or they have an infantry here as well um, you know what I think Pretty much like the movements are basically mirrored at the moment. I think there might be like a few like small differences here, but there's not really anything too significant. I think the major difference right now is D just has a little bit of a lead on this infantry right here. Um, maybe a little bit of a lead on like this infantry over here as well, but um, he doesn't have a tank strike yet. What he could do is he could threaten like two caps at the moment. Uh, Chloe Box would only be able to interrupt one of the caps like effectively. Unless they want to forego their own cap. But that would actually allow the tank to move up and strike over here. So, so I mean, yeah, he's got options. He's got lots of options. So let's see what he ends up doing, though. That's the real question. Ha, <laughs> yeah. So he goes up and threatens the double cap here. So that's a pretty good move. Pretty good move, I'm not gonna lie. That is pretty much what I would think would be the best move here, because like I said, he would have to interrupt and forego his own cap. Ooh, but he goes up and attacks the, the missile. Attacking the missile is like pretty big too, actually, to be completely honest, because now this missile is gonna be able to attack this Balakopter, but it's only gonna be able to do like maybe 50% damage. And in turn, I mean, you would have a 7 HP Battlecopter ready to go right afterwards, so it's not too bad. Tank can't actually hit here, though, so that's kind of unfortunate. Ooh, DG. DG is getting a little aggressive over here and actually attacking this infantry to go in for the cap, too. That is going to result in the loss of an infantry, but with, uh, yeah, two tanks... Oh, three tanks. Yeah, okay, so that's one, two, three tanks ready to go up here. Um, mm, 
Mmm, I don't know about that one, folks. I don't know about that one. That's looking pretty strong, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. They ate, uh, Chloe... He's got two tanks on the field to contend with these tanks, and a battle comp. The battle comp's probably gonna finish the... Yeah, we're gonna finish the missile. That's, that's fair. Now, Chloe's not actually able to go for the comm tower right now, too, which is very unfortunate. Um, looks like we're not going to go for the uh, full clear on the infantry. We're just going to interrupt it a little bit more. Do a little bit more damage. That's fair, but yeah, the tanks are moving in. Uh, we definitely just acquired a comm tower here. That is 100% guaranteed. Uh, there's there's no interrupting that comp tower. <laughs> that is that's going through folks. That's going through All right, we're moving the missile um, We bring the missile back and this is actually not bad. So this is a pretty good Sort of bait attack right here So if the tank goes in attacks and if the other tank goes in attacks then we'll be able to bring two tanks over here to possibly do some damage if he goes in for the attack. I don't think Deegis is gonna go for the attack. Making the missile retreat is basically a win in itself here. That's allowing your airport to be cleared up. Or freed up, I should say. But he goes in for the attack anyways and pops the side slip. Um one, two, three, four, five, six. Pops the side slip to get the battle copter. Hundred percent. That's what's happening right now. That is 100% what's happening. There goes, oh dear, you hate to see it, folks. The battle copter has been eliminated from the equation. And we actually got a pretty good hit over here on a tank. We're threatening a cap on a second comp tower. Oh boy. Oh boy, Chloe's going to have to make some big plays here very, very soon in order to keep in the game. Uh, two comp tower adder is a very dangerous combination. So... Let's see what they managed to do here. Anti air retreating. And I don't think this tank is going to be continuing the fight. It's probably going to be going back to get some heals here pretty soon. It's my guess. Battlecopter just base locking itself to attack the infantry. That's perfectly fine because the battlecopter doesn't really have anything else to effectively attack right away. And we got tanks to ward off these tanks. So, I mean, Battlecopter can just sit on the airport and just chill. To be completely honest, they can just hang out there, no problem. Uh, Chloe, though, does have access to the Super Co Power. I don't think we're going to be seeing a Super Co Power. No, we're definitely not going to be seeing a Super Co Power. There's not really anything, like, super effective you can gain from it. You could, like, um... Like, without the Calm Tower, it's kind of iffy, because you can't really effectively get the two hits, right? So, I mean, the tanks could go in, strike this tank... I mean, these tanks could go in, strike one of these two tanks as well, but I mean, it's not gonna, not gonna finish off anything, so that's the problem. Alright, so Chloe is a little bit ahead in units for sure. Uh, it is Deegis' turn though, and we are going for those caps. So Chloe is much farther ahead on properties as well, but... He just has two towers. <laughs> He's got two towers, folks. I think in the last game, we were just talking about Lash with two towers. Now we have Adder with two towers. This is wild. And, like, this income is going to get flipped very quickly here. Now, we do have... We have an interrupt here. We potentially have an interrupt here. I mean, infantry and infantry would probably have to interrupt those two. But these caps are going through no matter what. Even if you interrupt them, it's you. You're not going to be able to stop them like long term. There's too much presence right here, and especially this anti-air. So maybe if Chloe manages to clear the anti-air, then the copter can sort of run free here. But like one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> it's possible if we pop the super co power, we might be able to. Attack here, and then flip around and attack here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably finish it off with the battle copter. Sidewinder. Okay, I want to see if that's going to be the attack here, because that's like probably like the best thing that I can see, because we would clear the anti-air battle copter would be able to attack freely. 
So I wonder if that's gonna be the attack. That is not the attack. But we do clear lots of units, so let's see what the difference here is. So he's got the nine. So we clear two tanks, which is fantastic, I guess. Yeah, no, that's good. That's a nice attack, actually. So we don't go for the anti-air clear, but we go for the tank clears. Anti-air cannot actually move in. Like it's not gonna be able to hit the battlecopter anyway. So hey. Good job. See, that's why Chloe's good. Chloe's good. They know. They know what's up. They know the plays. But Deegis is also good, you know? So we're going to see if Deegis can come back from that little attack here. Now, he's massively behind on units, but... You know, we've seen people be behind on units before and still be able to pull off a win. It all, it all just comes down to positioning and game knowledge, folks. That's what it's all about. Now, 15 to 20 units, that is definitely quite a difference. Uh, Chloe managing to clear a couple more units. Clear another infantry. Was that a tank clear down there? No, that was an infantry clear. Okay. Anti-air has been cleared. We are trying to acquire one of the two comm towers now. Okay. D just 12 units at his disposal, 56,000 income on day 13. What are we going to be able to do here? We're going to interrupt the comm tower so that we can continue that plus 20% firepower. And we clear a unit up here, and that is pretty much it. Like, we didn't really do anything else that was, like, super crazy, but it's day 14. Day 14. There's lots and lots of time for crazy stuff, folks. So, Chloe manages to clear the infantry. Uh, still going for the cap. I mean, we didn't uh, continue the cap. It is sitting at 10 still. So, that's going to be a two-day cap. But, it has massive presence of units right here. So, that is pretty wild. Dejus, what are we going to do? We're going to pop the Sidewinder. The super, the plus two, plus two. What do we see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We don't have an attack with the second battlecopter. We have one strike right here. Three, maybe four tanks that are fresh. So we take out a battlecopter. Take out the missile. Attack one of the infantry trying to cap our property. Probably would finish the infantry off with the 3 HP, I'm guessing, unless the 3 HP has some uh, something else in mind, but no, no, we're going for it. So, I mean, like, all in all, I mean, we did damage. We brought the unit count pretty much back even. Chloe's only got 2 minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. Like, they've got a... They gotta pick up the pace with that timer. Too much time thinking, not enough time yeeting. That's what it is. Gotta do more yeets. Alright, that's like, that's, that's big. That's a big attack. So we took out multiple units here and we basically crippled this push here. And one, two, I mean we at least have like four tanks that are basically fresh and two battlecopters like what's he just gonna do so we take out one of the battlecopters we take out a tank take out an infantry almost take out an infantry yeah okay okay So D just pulled ahead in unit count there. Loses one, two units. That's rough. <laughs> That's a pretty rough push. 
Oh my god, like, I don't know how you would even attack into that. Like, what would you do? Alright, Deejus. We're gonna pop a side slip. We are going to attack one of the Capit Infantry. We are gonna attack the Anti-Air. These copters down here. <laughs> this copter has been a legend, man. He's just been getting so much done. Day 17. I mean, Chloe's still got lots of options, but Deejus is starting to close in with these units here, and Chloe's got no units over here, really, to effectively f ward off these captures, so this is becoming a little bit of an issue. I mean, it's not like a huge issue, because Chloe can easily just get a tank or something down over here, but they are just dominating this push over here. It's completely dominating. And like, D just attempts to fight back here every couple of days, but kind of getting the short end of the stick on most of it. Although, Chloe is very, I wouldn't say like very overextended, but they're fairly overextended at the moment. They're actually allowing for an anti-air clear on this uh, with two copters ready to go here. And actually no answer to the copters as well, so that's, that's a little bit of an iffy move. A little bit of an iffy move for sure. These copters are going to have a field day for a little while. Bringing in another copter. And this one anti-air is very far out of the the fight. And that's a resign. Hmm. Interesting. So D just actually did pull very far ahead there at the end. So he managed to acquire 18 properties. So he flipped lots of properties. Like the lack of uh, units over here in this corner really cost Chloe Box like a lot of income. A lot of income. This well, this uncontested infantry up here just going around just capping these properties, man. That's that's pretty much what it came down to. Um but Chloe, like what a game man. Like they had a lot of potential here. But D just is a crafty guy and he kinda just weasels his way in there and just uh, pulls off wins, so congratulations to D just uh, great game, Chloe Box. That was a very nice one to watch. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed that one. I know I definitely did. And if you did enjoy it, consider leaving a like, a comment, or subscribe. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care of yourselves, and bye-bye for now.